day 26. Um, I'm in Sun Valley. I, uh, I actually am behind a video because I didn't get to make one yesterday because I've been flying all day. And uh, so I owe a couple of extra videos. I think this week I'm going to try and make two a day for a few days to make up for a couple, which is great because there's unlimited content and unlimited breakthroughs happening constantly. There's so many things to talk about. I'd, you know, I, I don't even know which thing to start on because I've just been in full discovery. I mean, every second is a full discovery. And really, anything that you grab on as a truth, like, oh, that's the way to do it, is a lie. <laughs> because the only truth that there is is you. Not a method you use, not a discovery, not a type of breakthrough, but just you. When you get excited about something, you think it's because of that thing, but the truth is it's because you evolved. So if you meditate and you feel really, really good, you just moved yourself to a new state. And you, then you, instead of going, I just evolved, we start going, you guys, meditating is the most amazing thing. And sometimes you'll try to meditate the next day and it might be a totally different experience. You'll be like, that sucks because I thought for sure that it would work. And that's our problem is we put an expectation on things and then expect them to be a certain way. And we do this with relationships. We sit here and go, well, I had a first date with this person, so I feel so excited about them. So I want to always feel this way. So I want to feel that same way. So when I see him again, I, I'm going to feel that same thing. And then you don't. And all of a sudden, you blame them. You're like, I don't know what happened, but I was really excited about you. And now I'm not. And the problem isn't the person. The problem is you put your power into the person and not into the fact that you evolved, that that person coming into your life was a step forward. And the only real thing that I put my excitement in is moving towards the things that feel light. I know that sounds like a broken record, but there are so many things, and there's two type of pains that you can feel. And I've talked about this on a blog, but I don't think I talked about it here. The first one is a stagnant pain. The pain of I'm in something I don't want to be in in my soul, but I'm scared to leave it. I'm scared I'll hurt someone's feelings. I'm scared of that I'll become broke. I'm scared of leaving it. So we feel stuck in a thing. That pain is the grossest pain to me. It's just st stuck and it doesn't move. It's just not moving. It's like a pond. It's just flat and that's where all the moss shows up because the water doesn't move. So when I'm in that type of stuck, when I'm in a relationship that doesn't fulfill me or when I'm in you know, I'm in a job that I, I guess it's an old thing now because I love my job, but like when I'm in a place of just stagnancy, I feel bloated, I feel pulled back, I feel addicted. And that pain is a very, it's a duller pain, but it's like grosser. It's like I feel antsy and anxiety ridden and I feel like I'm going nowhere, but it fills our mind's egoic place and our, we're filming, we're, we're our, our minds, uh, we're filling that up with like, it's like drugs, it's like heroin, it's like alcohol, it's like I got this thing I'm holding on to. So that pain is a stagnant pain. So if you're in a position where you feel stuck and you feel like you can't move forward, um, that's the pain you're in, that's the first one. The second pain is a pain I love. It's the pain where you just let go of something and it causes this void that you had been filling with that grossness that void is exposed, so you feel really sad. And you feel really sad, so when you go through a breakup, you feel so sad because you feel like you're losing something. You feel so sad because you don't know what you're going to do. And you know you're in that sadness when you feel a massive emptiness and you really miss something, but it's when you start like getting fit. It's when you start like getting healthy and excited and driven and you're like, now what are we gonna do? You know, it's a really big difference. I like feeling the empty pain. I like feeling the pain of like, okay, all the addictions have been pulled from my heart, so I got a big exposed void here that I got to step into my power to meet. That's where your power is. So, um, yeah, we often think that the thing or the person that we're with was the source of our happiness, so we hold on to it and we feel this addiction. And then when we finally leave the company or we go, okay, I'm going to take this giant leap or I'm going to put the deposit on the Staples Center and get the stadium, whatever it is, you end up putting yourself in a position where there's an emptiness and a void that you got to 
you can't fill it with an addiction. You step into your power. And in that place, you start to tear up. You start to cry. You let go of the old story. You let go of the person you're missing. You let go of what you used to be. And then you make room for a, a power to enter it. Having an emptiness in your heart, in my opinion, is a great thing because it's going to be filled. You don't want to keep it all blocked and clogged up. Nothing can fill it. But when you pull that pain out and you feel this emptiness and this exposed vulnerability and this tear and this pain and this lostness, that's where we can start to go to work and that's where you're going to do your thing. Now, our goal isn't to be in pain, obviously, but be excited if you're in the second pain. If you're in the first pain, you're going to feel stuck and stagnant and in no direction because you're holding on to something that's temporarily filling the void that was really designed to put you in your power because that void is not anything other than you're not putting your power together. You're not stepping into your greatness. You're not going big enough. That's what that void is here for, to call you to your holy shit greatness. And when you step into that greatness, now life is just nuts because you are creating a place that you're like, I'm going to fill with motivation. I'm going to fill with my transformation. So the first one, though, you have to get out of. So one is like you're in a pool and you're stuck inside it. And the second one is we just opened the gate to the pool that was your safety net and water's pouring all over the place and you're totally flapping on the ground, but now you're free. That's the second one. And when you're flapping on the ground, you're like, okay, get up, because we now have more than just being stuck in the pool. But when you're in the thing, you're stuck in the pool, you're stagnant. So you want to not be in the pond, like I said, but you want to be in the river. The river moves like this, and it has twists and turns, and there's no bugs just sitting on it. It's always cleaning itself out, and it's in this edge, and that's what's life. That is available for every one of us. And we're here to step into that second one. So when you're scared to leave something, but if you really want to, know that you're going to be okay. And yeah, you're going to feel that pain that you've been trying to avoid by holding on. But that pain is your opening for your power. And you're here to step into your power. And you'll change the world in that power if you don't just keep filling it with nothing. Meet it. Meet that power. Meet that edge. And watch as you just move from this to this. I don't know, it felt like a dramatic ending that I was supposed to be like, day 26, this to this.